Hi, I'm Jeff Baxter, and I'm going to be showing you how to do constellation design in SDK. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to explore this scenario that has a few different ground locations identified already. So in this example, we're going to look at the building a constellation of satellites that provides the most continual coverage of the top 15 cities in the, in the world uh, based on population. So what we're going to do, we have those targets. I already loaded into our scenario here, and we're going to start building our constellation of satellites. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start building the, the seed satellite, the template satellite that's going to form the basis of our entire constellation. So we'll go ahead and design this orbit, in this case using the orbit wizard, and we'll use a circular satellite, and we'll increase our altitude here uh, to 1,000 kilometers. So now we've got a satellite in our scenario, and now what we want to do is look at the payload on this that would be providing coverage, whether that's looking at optical imaging, whether it's communications, whether it's uh, some other type of sensor on board this satellite. And so we'll model this as a gem generic field of view for now as a, uh, a simple cone. So we'll bring a sensor on the satellite and we'll give it a given field of view half angle. And we'll just set it at 55 degrees. And now, just like that, we've got a satellite and we see all of the individual targets and we want to then analyze how well this satellite detects our collection of targets. So SDK has the ability to do access calculations, which is telling you the line of sight from one object to another. You can generate reports that will give you the intervals when you have met your conditions and constraints such as line of sight, uh, which we're displaying here. Um, but what we want to do is we want to do something a little bit more advanced than a single satellite looking at all of these targets. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to build a whole constellation of satellites, and then we're going to look at uh, the change in the orbit parameters. So in order to change the orbit parameters, you can do that manually, or one of the ways that you can do it is automatically through our analyzer interface, which is our built-in in uh, trade study environment. And there's a variety of trade studies you can perform with an analyzer. There's uh, a simple one-on-one, uh, -on -one or uh, there's also design of experiments and optimization algorithms as well. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use this to vary different parameters in our scenario, such as the inclination of our satellite. So what we can do is we can select those variables that we're looking at, and then we can select the output parameters as well. So the report that we created was called access times, and what we want to look at is the total duration of that access interval. So just like that, we've selected our input and output for our trade study. We can go ahead and launch a parametric study that will just vary one input and evaluate the response of one output. And then we can iterate through a series of values. So in this case, we'll iterate the inclination of our satellite from 0 to 90 degrees at 10 degree st step sizes, and then look at how that impacts our access to this single target here. So when I do that, I can go ahead and hit the run button. You'll see it, it will start building all of the individual runs here in Analyzer. Inside my 2D graphics and 3D graphics windows, you can see the, the ground track of our satellite changing based on the inclination of our satellite, and you see the access times changing as a result. And what you can do is then you can view that data both for each individual run, and you can see a plot that shows you what that looks like as a function of time. So this is a pretty basic trade study within SDK for orbit design for a single satellite. So now what we're going to do is we're going to build off of this, and we're going to do something a little bit more complex. We're going to be looking at a whole constellation of satellites instead. So to do that, we're going to use the Walker tool inside of SDK. So the Walker tool allows you to build constellations of satellites very quickly. In this case, I'll do a, a fairly simple example. Let's just choose, let's create three satellites per plane and three planes, so a total of nine satellites. And we'll create a constellation of these called uh, sats. 
and we'll go ahead and click the create walker button and SDK is now using that initial satellite that we designed and it's going to then create three different orbit planes and three satellites in those planes that are all evenly spaced based on the settings that we provide. And as you can see it's, it's calculating the results currently and you see a little status icon in the, in the lower right hand corner as each of the satellites is, is getting created. And ultimately what we'll be left with is a constellation of satellites and sensors which we will use to evaluate when any of our sensors can see any of our targets and ultimately try to get to a condition where we have complete coverage of uh, any of the targets by any of our sensors at any given time. So here we can see what our new constellation of sensors looks like. We can then begin animating through the scenario timeline. We've just used the default 24 hour time period in this example. And you can visually see in the 2D window as our sensors are flying over the targets. So in order to calculate how we can add, how much our sensors see our targets, we use a chain object in SDK. And chain objects are extremely powerful in SDK. They allow you to provide, to define groups of objects and then assign when each of those objects sees any of the other objects and you can build multiple hops in that chain or you can set constraining conditions such as I need to see at least four of these satellites in order to uh, complete this chain. So the first thing we're going to do is we've got a group of targets, a group of satellites, and we also need to group our sensors together. So we'll go ahead and group our sensors by selecting the filter here at the top for all of the sensors which will select all of our satellite sensors and we can go ahead and create our chain of satellite or of sensors to targets. I'll rename the constellation here so it's clear which one's which and we will look at when any of our sensors sees any of our targets. It's that easy inside of a chain. What you'll notice immediately is you'll see some of the chain graphics showing you when some of those individual accesses are occurring. So these purple lines are telling us exactly when these conditions are met currently. And you can then animate through this to again, again get a visual understanding of how many satellites are seeing the targets at a given time. So now what we can do is we can report that and we can actually create a graph that will give us a Gantt view of when we have access to each of these targets. So in this case, we can see a timeline. It looks like we have pretty good coverage. There's still a few gaps where there's no coverage. So again, what we want to do is look at designing this constellation of sensors to give us the best coverage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete our original constellation. So we're back with our original satellite here. And we'll do the same thing we did earlier, but we'll look at a few different combinations. So we'll bring up Analyzer and we'll do the next round of trade studies for our constellation. In this case, we're going to do something a little bit more complex. We're going to be looking at uh, increasing the number of satellites and uh, the orbit planes and having Analyzer calculate when we get the best dur access durations. So what we're going to do here is go into our Analyzer window and we're going to, we've already got uh, our previous variables from our last trade study defined here. What we're going to do this time is add the walker constellation variables and we're going to look at the output being our chain. So our chain we want to look at our, our total duration of accesses. So we'll look at the sum duration of accesses. And in this case we're going to look at a few different inputs. So instead of using the same parametric trade study tool, we'll use the des design of experiments. I alluded earlier to different optimization algorithms. These are the optimization tools within Analyzer and there's also a Monte Carlo probabilistics tool as well. In this case, we'll choose a design of experiments and we'll enable the Walker constellation feature and we will tell Analyzer to use our constellation of sensors and we'll vary the number of planes and number of satellites per plane and we'll look at the total duration of our chain. And what we'll do is we'll specify the, the, the lower bound and upper bound of our trade study. And for this case, I'll do a pretty simple example. I'll just do two satellites per plane 
and two planes up to four. So you could certainly do much more exhaust, exhaustive trade studies looking at a much larger trade space. So that's how you set up a trade study very quickly inside of SDK and Analyzer. And rather than sit here and wait for this to compute, we're going to go ahead and load up an existing scenario that's already been pre-computed. So I've got a more complete, comprehensive example here. All of the trade studies were run overnight. There was hundreds of runs. And what we're going to look at is just simply the results. So we're actually looking at the results here on our screen. This was a more comprehensive trade study where we did a constellation of des design of satellites, and we also looked at the combined inputs of a series of aircraft. So this is looking at both aircraft and satellite coverage of different regions. The other difference is this is looking at whole geographic regions as opposed to individual target locations. So what you see in this example is the east and west coast boundaries off the United States. We wanted to look at the persistent surveillance. And what we're looking at here is the age of data of the areas. And we're, we've got a legend here in the upper left that is showing us the age of data from zero hours, meaning hot data, all the way to two hours and, and above, which is cold data or data that we have not collected. So you can see the data that we're currently collecting here that is very fresh at zero age of data is where our aircraft objects are currently flying at this particular moment in the simulation. So let me show you some of the inputs that were used in this example. So in the inside of Analyzer, these are the variables that we chose. We chose aircraft altitude, number of aircraft. We chose the altitude of the satellite and similarly the number of satellites and number of planes in the scenario. And you see that in this particular example, we had over 2,000 runs. So this took a while to compute, and the output responses were the age of data, uh, the average age of data for the entire region, and we also had a simple cost formula based on the number of aircraft and the satellites and altitude of the satellites. And then we're also returned the number of assets. So if we, if we scroll down through the bottom, you see different trade studies that were run. In this particular example, what I want to highlight is the end result, which is the overall cost versus performance of the trade study. So here we're looking at the average age of data here on the x-axis and the cost in millions of dollars, a notional cost in millions of dollars on the y-axis. And so these are all the 2,000 data points for each of the iterations inside of SDK. And what we're doing is we're looking at one of the optimal points uh, as a result here in this particular configuration. So you see in this case it shows uh, three aircraft on the west coast and six on the east coast and a, uh, this is the constellation of satellites that it came up with and as we animate through this scenario and view this surveillance in action you get a sense of what the coverage looks like. So here we see our first satellite flying over our region providing uh, uh, in a collection of those regions you see that as the satellite flies over, it's red initially, meaning it was just collected, it's hot data, and then over time it cools off, it goes yellow, green, all the way to blue. And as you can see, the satellites we've designed here are in pretty good orbits to provide coverage of both the east and west coasts. Uh, some of the satellites here you're providing uh, multiple passes and providing that really overall good uh, coverage, ISR coverage, for this system. So this is a more complete example. You can do some very basic things with Constellation Design and SDK. You can look at a single satellite, varying orbit parameters for individual targets. You can look at groups of satellites to groups of targets. You can look at groups of, tar groups of satellites and aircraft to entire geographic regions. And you can look at a variety of different output responses, whether you're looking at just uh, access times to a single target, or if you're looking at something like age of data, or response times, or revisit rates, all of those are outputs that SDK provides. And there's the built-in trade study interface with an analyzer that allows you to vary parameters on a one-by-one -one basis or run more complex design of experiments looking at any inputs versus any outputs. So that's all I had. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to check out our website, help.agi.com, or just email us directly at support at agi.com. Uh, thanks for watching the video.